We have Jeff Parker here who's going to talk to us about all sorts of things. So, uh, happy Friday. We, uh, I, I swear you were just here yesterday. What yeah. is up with that? Everything's <laughs> just flying by. This is a quick week, for definitely. It was a and quick then next week. week, we got Thanksgiving, so a short uh, week. It's going to be a short uh, week. Yeah. They do go fast. They do go fast. Now, uh, last time we talked, we talked a little bit about some of the COVID numbers that were increasing. I don't think that's really changed that much. I think things are obviously increasing even more. So uh, what kind of uh, numbers do well, you got for us? And we'll talk about what you see up on the board there, which is unfortunately um, the COVID cases at 582. Yesterday was over 600. Um, unfortunately, nine reported deaths. Um, on that reported deaths, I want to point out and, and the seriousness of it, obviously, we understood any death is, uh, is really um, something to be concerned about, but it's t tended to be, you know, skilled nursing facilities, assisting livings, but in the case of yesterday's number, seven residents that are not in those facilities. So this is throughout Orange County again. So right. I wanna, wanna make sure everybody understands that. But the one that we talked about before on Monday was watching that hospitalization rate. Now it's over 300. Mm -hmm. um, back when we were talking two or three weeks ago, we were in the 150 range. Right. Um, and because of those numbers right there, especially those hospitalization numbers, that's why we got tripped into the purple tier on Tuesday. Uh, okay. You know, on Monday we said it might be coming and sure enough, oh. lo and behold, and that's the reason that 10.8 cases per 100 um, thousand is what put us back into that widespread. Mm -hmm. Some more other numbers are still positive rate, still a better than you know being uh, real high and in a purple category, but we're we're there now. And so, um, as you know, and and for our residents, if they didn't hear, obviously the governor declared a curfew um, mm -hmm. that's going to start Saturday, mm -hmm. you know, from 10 to 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, there are some exceptions to it and some rules, so d definitely want to go on the state's website to get all the information so you're very up, up to speed with regards to that. Again, these are efforts that they're trying to get our numbers down. They're trying to get as much control. And this is not just California. Right. Um, this is not just Orange County. This right. is everywhere in the country and everybody's seeing the spike. And it's such an unfortunate time because now we're getting into the cold weather back east right. of the winter times, and now we're into the holidays. Next right. week's Thanksgiving, as I, we just talked about, people wanting to travel. Very, very strong recommendations out by CDC and everybody about trying not to travel, um, restricting that, restricting your gatherings. So um, again, uh, all we can tell you is uh, be careful out there, wear your mask, wash your hands, Try not, definitely social distancing, um, and then restrict or uh, try to reduce the amount of gatherings and the size of your gatherings is right. probably the best information and the best knowledge that we can participate with our residents in the village. Exactly. We did jump up um, 90 cases now, mm -hmm. um, so we're seeing a little bit of you know, growing in, in, in the village, mm -hmm. which when I say the village, Laguna Woods, the city of is where the stats come out. Um, and so just, again, being careful and, and being present about that, um, I th and we can get through this, but um, right. those, are, those are some interesting numbers and um, they're, they're scary in the sense that they, they continue to rise. And, and well, so. right, and then you look at, I mean, we talked about this so many times about our community being of the highest risk. And one thing that um, happened yesterday that I think might, might be worth talking about is I was speaking to somebody and we were talking about, do you know anybody that has COVID-19? And the, the gal said, well, yes, I know three people uh, in my community and two, and then I know two people that died. So perspe perspective um, and the perception of what's happening out there is different and varies from person to person. So for instance, I don't necessarily know anybody, um, but to take into consideration, you know, you, you wonder why they're doing certain things like a curfew or, you know, why we're doing all of these, these stay at home things is it's because of the fact that you may end up knowing somebody. I, I think that's it. Uh, I think you hit it right on the head. I think that is kind of the key element is I think when this first started, when we were back in March, and April and May, it was like, well, I don't know anybody who's got it, you know, that yeah. type of thing. And then all of a sudden you start to hear the stories and you hear more of the personal notes. I, I know last night I w was reading a story about a um, probation officer in Riverside County who passed away from COVID-19 at the age of 34. Okay. And, and, you're, and you're like going, wow, to that organization 
what, you know, what does that mean? And the same thing here. We, you know, we don't want to go through that. And, right. and so as much as, um, you know, we've been lucky here in the village, I think, and with our staff and not having, you know, any major cases of it, it right. uh, doesn't mean it's not happening out there in the world. Exactly, exactly. So anyway, enough said on that because yep. I just wanted to reiterate that. But thank you for going over the numbers. It's always sure. good to know because not everybody goes to the website. So for us to catch up on that. Now, moving into something else that's, you know, definitely different, but certainly something to be apprised of because... We are moving into a situation where many, many people will be doing stuff online. And we've talked to um, our director of security, Carlos, about being secure. We're going to talk to the Orange County Sheriff's Department about being secure. Um, and you're going to tell us a little bit about the malware right. situation. And it can happen to anyone and any business. So um, back in October, uh, at the end of the October, we, we came on and told you about that we had a malware uh, incident. We, we also put an uh, e-blast out to our village and gave them some a very general information about what had happened and what had shut down our systems. Were. Um, so we were hit with a malware um, that encrypted basically all of our operations. It went into every one of our systems and shut everything down. Um, one of the questions, and I know one of the things that we're hearing in, in a lot of dialogue out there is, well, why didn't we have a backup? Well, we did have a backup. Unfortunately, the way the, which everything was structured, that malware, which is very sophisticated and very new, and it's a cyber malware out of Russia um, mm -hmm. that's hitting all kinds of places in Orange County, not just us, um, had the ability to get to our backup information as well. So it not only locked up our operating but our backup system too so it's not like we could go to our backup and say hey let's just restore we weren't able to do that mm -hmm. so um and it was um at, you know we, we were going through the investigation with the fbi and the um, orange county sheriffs and their team like that so um i know there's a lot there was a lot of talk out there and at first i was waiting to the investigation to get further on there was a ransom um because of this malware um and we we're in a position where we needed to get back on our feet in a sense and get our data back. It was so critical. This is data that we use for past information to make sure that we're up to speed when we do in inspections and M and C and manner alterations. We need this documentation. Um, so we went ahead and paid that ransom in order to get the encryption key back. So that has occurred. I want people to understand that, that there, there's numbers out there that are being talked about that are huge. It was not huge. And that um, payment, that ransom payment, gave us the encryption key back. That payment will not affect anybody's assessments. We we're able to incorporate that into our operating budget and make sure that we could make that payment. So it's not going to affect anybody's financial um, concerns relative to the fact of assessment. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. And then from an operational point now, we have that key back. We unencrypted it, so we have all our data back. So that's really the big success. So all of our information that um, we couldn't get to, we now can get to. Okay. And so that's the first stage. Second stage now is to take all of that data and make sure that it's not encrypted or possibly being encrypted again by different malware or the same malware that and we missed you know one of the bugs yeah, in the system yeah. so we're going through our IT department literally what we call scrubbing every one of our PCs yeah. every one of our servers we're cleaning them all up with you know all the protective um, cybersecurity protections we can do and then we can reload that data back into our operations. Okay. And we're doing that, and we made a lot of strides. Stell you hear Stellar, that's one of them that we have back in mm -hmm. um, system. So resident services and maintenance and construction are now be able to go back into that system. Mm -hmm. So that's real positive. I think from a, um, the other thing I wanted to mention that was, is real important is our AX system, which is our financial system was one of our systems that was never encrypted. It was never impacted by this malware. Mm. So we've been able to make our payments, accounts receivable, accounts payable. We've been able to move forward with that. 
Um, we, we did make a modification to our AX system to make sure we had more protections, kind of you know, putting it into the cloud, putting it in a different operating mode, but that information that was on the AX system was not compromised, mm -hmm. and that's really, really important. Um, I think one of the other um, questions that we hear a lot of is, well, did my, is there credit card information that uh, could have been stolen? Right. We, don't, we don't have any system here with the AX system or anything where we collect credit card information. You process a payment using a credit card, you're going through a third party. Um, we've, okay. never, we've never had a system here in, in our recent operation where we've collected or kept somebody's credit card information. Oh, good. So I think um, that's important. But just as you said as you opened up, doesn't mean that's not happening out there. It's, it's the holiday season. People are using that. Shipping, people are doing a lot of different buying. And, and so we want to make sure that people understand be diligent about your uh, identity theft and credit card theft, and 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 you you know you've talked about that. Um, and here's a phone number to call with regards to getting that kind of information with regards to identity theft or credit card theft. Right. People should be diligent. People should be watching their their statements and making sure that there isn't something um, false and contacting their credit card yeah. um, companies with regards to that type of information. Well, you can, you can set things up with your credit cards to have alerts. Sometimes it's kind of a pain because they might alert you and it's what, something you've done. But nonetheless, I mean, you can certainly do that. And, you know, can I go back and just ask you one quick question? Because it's very interesting to me that, you know, this is something that occurs on a regular basis that we hear about. But when you work with the FBI and you work with our Orange County Sheriff's Department, what kind of things do you have to do? Uh, you know, with them to be able to get them on the right path to find where this is coming from. So as part of that process, we, we have hired a outside experts to do what we call forensic analysis to, uh -huh. to def um, so we look at, uh, in that forensic analysis, they um, try to help us identify how the malware got here. Okay. Um, did, did it get sent by a email did it get sent by uh, you know Excel package or, or however that and so we, if we can identify that and then they can get into the specifics of identifying the process that it got here mm -hmm. plus the fact that um, although um, a unique process and, and first certainly first time for me to go through you know the negotiation process of talking to these you know bad players wow. um, they were actually part of our negotiations with them was, hey, if we're going to pay any kind of ransom, we want to know what you, what you did, you know, yeah. what you encrypted. Did you take any of our files? Um, we want our, all our files back, number one. So yeah. um, one of the things I wanted to mention was that we do know that, and they call it extraction, but we do know that some files were taken. And, but we have everything back. So that's... Right kind of part of that ransom thing. Give it, give it all back. You took it for a while, but you've given it all back to mm -hmm. us, plus you've unlocked everything that we had. Mm -hmm. But with that um, element of them taking those files, we're going through the process now, continuing process, of more forensic or, and, and evaluation of, of those files to ensure or to define, did anybody's personal information in there? Right. Um, or was it just MNC files or just yeah. recreation files or HR files? Because HR files could be just as important to us too because was there any information there relative to our own employees um, right. or was it just um, our operation stuff? So we're going through that process. We hope to have that identified really soon. And, and then any notification that we have to do beyond that, we certainly will. Yeah. But we're still in that process, and as far as we, our, our knowledge right now, we're trying to ascertain if there's any information that's, you know, private information that could have been um, extracted, even though we have all the data back, right. um, which is really the important thing. Exactly. Well, thank you for working on that and explaining it to us and being transparent because, you know, it is something that is very concerning as a whole. So thank you. And, uh, and I just wanted to mention what we've talked about today, we put together in an e-blast. Um, and we're going to send that out to the community this afternoon with our normal um, 
you know, what's up in the village, um, eBlast with everything, or give, give you the same information that I just provided to our residents so they know that phone call, that phone number to call if they want to check with them. Um, um, a government uh, ID theft type information okay. and, and what they can do and some recommendations and that's in the e-blast along with where we're at in our process. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's certainly something to be concerned about, like we mentioned, you know, for individuals and then you did mention that other corporations are also dealing with this. It's just a shame. It's a shame that we have to go through stuff like this. Yeah, I was um, in talking to you know, Orange County uh, sheriff's organization, the cyber crime area, and the FBI of talking about how this, um, especially in particular, this one, one hack that mm -hmm. came in through this one, I'll call it Russian, what they say are Russian um, in, individuals, how many in Orange County, just in Orange County, that were hit with this. Um, so it's increasing. Um, I think going forward, I think every business. Um, every corporation out there is going to be very cognizant because we've seen more and more of this right. um, in the last few years, not just from Russia, but from China and other, other places. And it can be very disruptive, like it was in our case, and it's still disruptive. I want to make right. sure to our residents, we're not back up to 100% yet. We have the data back, and now we're making sure that data is clean and our systems clean so we get yeah. that back and get our servers back into a place where people can access the information and, and it has put delays into it um, there's no question uh, and i feel bad that some of our inspection process and and plans and um, permitting process has slowed down and even working with all the realtors with regards to trying to get escrows closed and everything course, yeah. um, it has been a problem and, and we recognize that and we appreciate people working with us um, that are understanding of that we're, we're trying as hard as we can to get up to speed. Well and also another thing to tell everybody is please be patient because this is something that's fairly new to us. Obviously it's a new type of software that we're trying to deal with and it could be something new that the FBI and their cybersecurity is seeing as well and so they're going to have to have a learning curve too. Yeah a lot of the what we've been told is a lot of the technology for that is behind the bad guys is just new new age exactly. stuff and how it works and how it goes into your system and lays dormant for a period of time and then spreads yeah it, and it's it's very tricky and, and 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 the technology that they've advanced so that they can go not only like we were talking about getting our primary but how having it have the capability of going back into the backup and and stopping that so we're, we're, we're very happy that we're moving forward yeah. um, and and very much appreciative of our residents having that patience and understanding and and then getting to the next level getting our operations back up to speed mm -hmm. and then and then making sure that if when we go through and scrub those last files that we know that were extracted that if there's any information then we need to make sure that we notify people Okay. Well, gosh, thank you. Thanks for the information. On that note, have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. See you again on Monday. Thank right, you. Thanks. And uh, just remember to keep an eye out for any theft that you may see on your credit cards or bank statements. Now, when we come back, we'll tell you what the movie is. And I apologize we didn't get to the United update today, but we will go ahead and get to the United update on Monday. Stay tuned.